The Battle of Gunsberg on 9 October 1805 saw General of Division Jean-Pierre Furman Maller's French division attempt to seize a crossing over the Danube River at Gunsberg in the face of a Habsburg Austrian army led by Feldmarschall Lieutenant Karl Mack von Lieberich. Maller's division managed to capture a bridge and hold it against Austrian counterattacks. The battle occurred during the War of the Third Coalition, part of the larger Napoleonic Wars. After Max's Austrian army invaded Bavaria, it found itself the target of a powerful offensive by the army of Emperor Napoleon I of France. When Napoleon's corps threatened to envelop Max's army, the Austrian general unwisely held his ground near the city of Ulm. As the French armies blocked the Austrian retreat routes to the east, Mack attempted to move his army to the south bank of the Danube. After receiving orders to seize the Danube bridges, Marshal Michel Ney sent Milher to capture the crossing at Gunsberg. Maller's main attack on two bridges failed in the face of a vigorous Austrian defence. However, a late arriving French unit captured the eastern bridge that had just been rebuilt by the Austrians and was able to hold on to it until evening. Discouraged by the encounter, Mack ordered his soldiers to march back to Ulm which is 22 kilometres west-southwest of Gunsberg. Background War plans Austria, defeated by France in the War of the Second Coalition and forced to accept a French client state in Italy, planned to take revenge. In November 1804, Austria made a secret alliance with the Russian Empire whereby Austria's 235,000 soldiers would be supported by 115,000 Russian troops and financial backing from Great Britain. The head of the Austrian army, Feldmarschall Archduke Charles, Duke of Teschen, believed his soldiers were not ready for war. But the pro-war faction at the court of Emperor Francis I of Austria outmaneuvered him. Feldmarschall Lieutenant Karl Mack von Lieberich, who had the full confidence of the emperor, became largely responsible for developing Austria's war plan. Mack's strategy called for 120,000 troops in Italy commanded by Charles, 25,000 in the county of Tyrol under Archduke John of Austria, 70,000 in Bavaria under Feldmarschall Lieutenant Archduke Ferdinand Karl Joseph of Austria s, and 20,000 in reserve. Mack would accompany Ferdinand's force, which would be joined by a Russian army and attack across the Rhine River into France. Charles would sweep across Italy and invade southern France. It was hoped that the Kingdom of Prussia could be induced to join the coalition. Mack convinced Emperor Francis I that he should invade Bavaria first, while Charles marked time in Italy. The general believed that by the time Napoleon intervened in Bavaria, the Russian army would have arrived to help the Austrians. This erroneous assumption caused Mack and the war hawks to fall into a comedy of errors. Foreseeing trouble with Mack's plan, Charles talked the emperor into transferring 30,000 soldiers from Italy to Germany but these troops would arrive too late to remedy the situation. Napoleon's Grand AAR Emir QT numbered 219,000 soldiers and consisted of seven corps, the Reserve Cavalry, and the Imperial Guard. Marshal Jean-Baptiste Bessieres led the 7,000-strong Imperial Guard. Marshal Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte commanded the 17,000-man First Corps. General of Division August Marmont directed the 20,000 troops of the Second Corps. Marshal Louis Davout controlled 26,000 soldiers of the Third Corps. Marshal Salt led the 40,000-strong 4th Corps. Marshal John Lannis had 18,000 men in the 5th Corps. Marshal Michel Ney commanded the 24,000 soldiers of the 6th Corps. Marshal Pierre Augereau directed the 14,000-man 7th Corps. Marshal Joachim Murat led the cavalry reserve with 22,000 troopers in seven divisions, while the artillery reserve had 5,000 gunners. In the summer of 1805, the Grand AAR Emir QT lay in its camps on the English Channel. Napoleon planned for the Grand AAR Emir QT to march to the Rhine, then execute a vast right wheel from the Rhine to the Danube. 
picking up his 25,000 Bavarian allies on the way. Meanwhile, Marshal André Masséna with 50,000 troops would hold Archduke Charles in northern Italy. Assisted by 20,000 reinforcements from central Italy led by General of Division Laurent Wuvi and Saint Cyr, Marshal Guillaume Marie and Brune would remain on the northern coast of France with 30,000 soldiers. Napoleon issued his marching orders on 26 August. Operations on 8 September, the army of Archduke Ferdinand invaded the electorate of Bavaria, with a plan to defend the line of the Lech River. The Bavarian army acted according to its secret treaty with France and marched north to the main river. Mack changed the plan on 12 September and insisted that the army continue to advance farther west to the Illa River. Ferdinand and the Army Chief of Staff General Major Anton Mayer von Heldensfeld both opposed the move and appealed to the Emperor. Francis, however, upheld his favourite Mack and dismissed Mayer from his position. Relations between the Archduke and Mack deteriorated to the point where the two communicated only in writing. On 24 September, Napoleon's corps began crossing the Rhine, but the real attack was coming from the northwest, and on 2 October the line of corps acted like a door swinging on its hinges as the corps angled south, aiming for Ingolstadt and Don Orworth on the Danube. By 7 October, Napoleon's corps had reached the Danube and secured crossing points. When he became aware of the French threat, Mack made the questionable decision to stand at Ulm. To oppose the French, Mack organized his army into four corps under Feld Marshal Lieutenant Karl Philipp, Prince of Schwarzenberg with 28 infantry battalions and 30 cavalry squadrons. Feld Marshal Lieutenant Franz von Werneck with 30 battalions and 24 squadrons. Feld Marshal Lieutenant Michael von Kienmeier with 19 battalions and 34 squadrons, and Feld Marshal Lieutenant Franz Jelasic with 15,000 and 16 battalions, 6 Jaeger companies, and 6 squadrons. Schwarzenberg massed at Ulm, Werneck defended Gunsberg, and Kienmeier held Ingolstadt. Meanwhile, Jelasic's troops held a line farther south near Bibrach and RRISs where they were watching the Black Forest. Mack apparently made no preparations to defend the line of the Danube. Instead, he planned to strike at Napoleon's lines of communication stretching back to France. The French easily penetrated Kian Mayer's outnumbered cordon defense of the Danube at Donalworth. After a series of minor clashes, Kian Mayer retreated southwest toward Munich via Eichach. Lannis, Murat, and Salt crossed the Danube near Donalworth. On 8 October, Lannis and Murat marched southwest and collided with Feld Marshal Lieutenant Franz Xavier von Offenberg's division in the Battle of Wörtingen. The French crushed Offenberg's isolated force and forced it back toward Ulm. On this day, Salt marched toward Eichach and Davout reached the Danube at Neuburg and Erdunau, while Bernadotte and Marmont arrived at Ingolstadt. Ney marched to Donalworth, but he never crossed the Danube and instead moved west to Jengen while following orders to proceed to Ulm. Napoleon judged that Mack would try to retreat through Augsburg or Landsberg Amlet and sent his corps to block those routes. He rejected the idea that the Austrians would cross to the Danube's north bank and attack his supply lines. In fact, that what exactly what Mack was contemplating. Battle. After the debate at Wörtingen, Mack gave up the idea of striking east along the south bank of the Danube. He instead decided to cross at Gunsberg and march east on the north bank. At this time, Mack and Ferdinand deployed a significant part of their army on a line from Raisensburg, just east of Gunsberg on the Danube, to Limbich which lies 5 kilometers to the southeast. General Major Constantin Gillian Karl Despre commanded a force on the north bank designed to watch for the French and protect the bridges. Unknown to Mack, Ney's VI Corps received new instructions to seize a crossing at Gunsberg. Ney told off General of Division Jean-Pierre Furman Maller's 3rd Division to capture the bridges. Maller's 8,000-man division included six battalions of the 27th, 50th, and 59th Line Infantry Regiments. 
three battalions of the 25th Light Infantry Regiment, and six artillery pieces. One of his brigade commanders was General of Brigade Machu de la Base. For the attack, Mather split his force into three columns. The western column under Colonel Etienne Nicolas Lafolle moved to Lifeheim, but he abandoned the effort when the street led into a marsh. The central column led by General of Brigade Pierre-Louis Binet de Marcognet moved directly south toward the two main Gunsberg bridges. Led by Delabase, the 59th Regiment made up the eastern column which moved toward a bridge just east of the town. The bridge at Reisenberg was ignored. Mark Ognett's central column bumped into Despray's picket line. Alerted, the Austrians in Gunsberg immediately destroyed the bridges. Trapped between the French and the now unbridged river, Despray surrendered with 200 Tyrolean Jaegers and two cannons. Milher pressed on and attacked the town. Gunsberg sits on high ground overlooking the Danube and an island in the stream. The island was crossed by two bridges. From the south bank, positions suitable for artillery dominate the low banks on the island. The soldiers of the Archduke Charles Infantry Regiment near three and twenty cannons laid down a deadly curtain of fire. Milher brought forward four cannons, but they were overwhelmed by Austrian counter-battery fire. After a futile effort to rebuild the bridges under fire, the French gave up and took cover. Despite the previous fighting, Mack persisted in his idea to cross to the north bank. Accordingly, he ordered Feldmarschall Lieutenant Ignaz Gale to take seven battalions and fourteen squadrons to the eastern bridge. Mack directed Gale to repair the span, cross over, and form a bridgehead on the north bank. He intended that the army would cross to the north bank that night and operate there. The 7,000-man Austrian force included four battalions of the Kaunitz Infantry Regiment near 20, three battalions of the Württemberg Infantry Regiment near 38, one battalion of the Franz Gelassik Infantry Regiment near 62, one Jaeger battalion, the Grenadier battalions of the Stuart, Kolorda, Erbic, and Kaunitz Infantry Regiments. Four squadrons of the Archduke Palatine Hussar Regiment near 12, two squadrons of the Rosenberg Chevalier Regiment near 6, two squadrons of the Schwarzenberg Gulen Regiment near 2, and six artillery pieces. No sooner had Gaillet's men repaired the bridge than the 59th Regiment appeared, hours behind schedule. In close order column, the French smashed through the Austrian defenders and seized the span. Austrian cavalry appeared and charged the 59th three times but the French formed square and drove off each attack. Milher concentrated his division to defend his newly acquired river crossing. As night fell, the French controlled both ends of the span. Nee's other two divisions were also busy on the 9th of October. General of Division Louis Henry Loison's 2nd Division of 6th Corps captured the bridge at Elchingen, defeating the single Austrian regiment defending it. General of Division Pierre Dupont de Luretang's 1st Division advanced toward Ulm. Result. The Austrians lost six guns and 2,000 casualties, including Despray captured and Major Franz Miller of the Kaunitz Regiment killed. Their losses fell heavily on the Württemberg Regiment. The French suffered 700 casualties including Colonel Gerard Le Cue of the 59th killed. Mack later excused his mistake in instructing Gaillet to rebuild the bridge. He claimed that he was so absorbed in writing orders on the 9th that he did not notice the cannon fire. Ney reported to Napoleon that both Mack and Ferdinand had been at Gunsberg on the 9th and suggested that a strong enemy force lay at Ulm. However, after interviewing his prisoner Despray, Ney concluded that the Austrians were retreating to Biberach. Napoleon then ordered Ney to attack Ulm, not understanding that he was sending a single corps against the entire Austrian army. The next action was the Battle of Haslach Jungjingen on the 11th of October.